Sure. So, you know, I primarily manage the multi-phase flows and heat transfer lab uh, here at Texas A&M. And so our research work is at the interface of uh, micro nanotechnologies with uh, multi-phase flows and heat transfer, things that involve, you know, flow of bubbles or um, flow of um, solid particles in liquid, for example. And uh, this has applications, uh, you know, in a pretty wide range. Uh, starting from energy efficiency to solar energy to nuclear power and also in oil and gas exploration. Uh, in particular, we are doing a project right now with the Department of Energy, ARPA-E, uh, on using phase change materials uh, to serve as a thermal battery uh, for cooling power plants. Uh, but this also has applications in cooling electronics and you know, in self-driving cars, for example. And there's also a lot of applications in uh, biology and life sciences and uh, therapeutics as well, things like drug delivery. Uh, for example, if you put nanoparticles in fluids, what are known as nanofluids, um, could be used as carriers for injecting drugs into different tissues, for example. So it's fundamental in the sense that many of the scaling laws that you apply in your everyday world um, kind of gets convoluted once you shrink things to very small dimensions. And so that gives you uh, leverage over different types of applications that you can think of. And uh, you can also scale up the same principles to very large structures and very large uh, objects or applications. And so the applicability of uh, these uh, fundamental equations and constitutive laws across different length scales and time scales is what makes it very interesting and very diverse in terms of uh, uh, the benefits that you can uh, leverage out of these technologies. So, you know, there are different uh, variety of techniques uh, that you can employ uh, to keep the students employed, I mean, to, to keep the students interested in the classroom. Uh, among all the techniques that I use, the one that I like the most is the Socratic method which is not really to give the, the answers to the questions directly, uh, but to lead them along by asking them questions and uh, through sort of a self-discovery process uh, where you know they can, uh, you sort of guide them along a path and they, they pick up the, the answers and the solutions along the way. I think that keeps them very engaged in the classroom if you constantly keep asking questions and, and they are doing the thinking in real time while you are doing the classroom instruction uh, and then both uh, inside the classroom and then outside the classroom. Um, you know, you could use uh, similar techniques uh, to keep the students engaged. I think I try to instill in them a sense of value. So I'm an instructor for this course called uh, Ethics and Engineering. Um, so I think this uh, professional, inculcating this uh, attitude of professional ethics is very important for uh, guiding students uh, to help them succeed in real life uh, once they're out of the university. Uh, so inculcating a sense of uh, multidimensionality that you know life is not one dimensional, there are different players involved and each of them get affected in different ways uh, based on the decisions you make. Um, so, so inculcating that value system I think is very important in addition to making them uh, technically uh, very mature and uh, you know uh, technically uh, knowledgeable. Uh, those are important, but, but I think inculcating the professional ethics is also very important, in my opinion. Um, so I just got started with the FGEN program. Uh, I went through a few mentoring sessions and a few uh, orientation sessions. Uh, so I'm quite excited about it. So I'm looking forward to uh, mentoring the, the first generation students in engineering and hoping to see um, uh, an impact down the road, maybe 10, 15 years down the road, when we can look back and say, you know, uh, this, this really made a difference in the world. Uh, the, the, you know, in Texas A&M in general, and then uh, in, in specific in particular, and then academia in general, um, uh, is, is a very exciting place to work. Um, uh, b before coming to Texas A&M, you know, I had worked in the, in an industry professional engineer sort of uh, role, uh, both as a, as a sort of R&D engineer, applications engineer, and then also managing projects as a manager. 
in a biotech company as well as in micro and nano manufacturing companies. Um, so based on the industry experience that I gathered, I, I brought it to Texas A&M. And um, the part that really uh, excites me is the freedom to choose my research subject and um, you know, bring that aha moment for the students who are working on the different projects and you know, classroom uh, type of environment as well as in the research lab. And so, so this freedom to choose research topics and pursue exciting areas that have an impact in society uh, is, is, has been a very rewarding experience. In particular, uh, one of the former students from our department who did his bachelor's, master's, and PhD uh, here at Texas A&M in mechanical engineering, his name is Brandon Dooley. Uh, Brandon and I, you know, we kept in touch even after he graduated. He was working in the oil and gas industry for several years. And then we decided to start a company. And um, last year we started the company. Brandon is the president and CEO of the company. And the biggest uh, business pitch competition in Texas is this uh, Texas New Ventures competition. And so Brandon went and pitched the business idea and he won the, the fifth prize and then also the innovation prize and the visualization prize. I think that was a big boost, uh, emotional and ego boost that uh, what we are doing has potential to change uh, society. And so that has been one of the most rewarding experience uh, after coming to Texas A&M. In addition to graduating something like uh, 14 PhD students, uh, 19 master's students, um, several undergraduate honors thesis, and then you know, hosting probably more than 25 uh, undergraduate students as a part of the research experience for undergraduates uh, from different parts of US and from different parts of the world. Uh, they came and worked in my lab um, and including international visiting researchers as well. And uh, making an impact is, is, I think, one of the most rewarding experience uh, of being in Texas A&M.